This example is about simple harmonic motion, but it's a bit of um, a harder problem because it requires you to combine uh, your knowledge on a few different things. Um, at the same time, it's a good one to practice uh, because there are different ways to actually get to the right answer. Um, and it's a case where you have to do things step by step and consider um, at each step what you're doing and why you're doing it. So here's the problem. A 10 kilogram mass is traveling to the right with a speed of 2 meters per second on a frictionless horizontal surface when it collides with and sticks to a second 10 kilogram mass that is initially at rest but is attached to a spring system with a constant of uh, 170 newton per meter. Find the frequency, amplitude and period of the subsequent oscillations. Okay, so let's first make our drawing. We have our horizontal surface. We have a 10 kilogram mass that's moving at 2 meters per second to the right, where it will eventually collide to collide with and stick to a second mass, which is also 10 kilograms. Now that mass is connected to a spring system, which will be connected to a wall or something. Okay. And so now the question is, um, what will happen? Well, so once your mass actually is colliding, it actually sticks. Okay, so now what we have is a combined mass of 20 kilograms, mass spring system. And so essentially now we'll get, we will get simple harmonic motion. Okay, now if you recall for simple harmonic motion, the frequency for a mass spring system is only de de determined by the physical properties um, of your mass spring system. So that doesn't require any more information than actually what we already have, All right? So we'll get simple harmonic motion. Um, and we know that for a mass spring system, the angular frequency is given by the square root of k over m, where k is the um, spring constant and m is the total mass. So in this case, the spring constant is 170 newtons per meter. The mass is, of course, then the total mass. The system so it's 20 kilograms. And so this comes out to be 2.91 radians per second. Okay, and so once you know the angular frequency, you can also immediately find the period, right? So the frequency is one thing that's asked, the period is the second thing. The period is nothing else but 2 pi divided by omega. So that's 6.28 divided by 2.91. So that is 2.15 seconds. Okay, so far, so good. The amplitude, however, that's a bit harder. That's where you have different um, options to actually work with. The amplitude will be dependent on the initial conditions. And so we have to now carefully consider what's happening at the beginning of the simple harmonic motion. So as long as this mass is just traveling to the right, there's no simple harmonic motion happening. It's only as soon as they collide and stick, that simple harmonic motion starts. So that's gonna be what determines our initial condition. And so if um, you may think that, well, this is a simple conservation of energy problem, you know the mass and you know the velocity of this block, so that's one half mv square. That's going to be the total energy that needs to be conserved. And we know that total energy in a mass spring system is one half um, ka square. And so from that, we should be able to work things out. Um, you may think that and you will actually get an answer, but it's not going to be the correct answer. Okay, and the reason why it's not the correct answer is that our mass is actually sticking to the second mass. Okay, so m1 sticks to m2, so that means that this is an inelastic collision. Okay, and so if it's an inelastic collision, what does that mean? Well, it means that kinetic energy itself is not conserved. So some of this kinetic energy will go into deformation or into heating um, of the masses. So we cannot use conservation of energy directly. So, but for an inelastic collision, we can always use conservation of momentum. And so what that will tell us is it will tell us the velocity, the initial velocity of these masses, um, initial in the sense of our um, simple harmonic motion. Okay, and so, um, 
let's do that first. So from conservation of momentum, we're finding that M1 times V, well, let's call it just V1 for now, must equal M1 plus M2, and let's just call this for now V2. Okay, and so uh, M1 is equal to M2, so this essentially is 2M1, okay, and so you find that V2 is essentially V1 over 2, so we find that our V is going to be 1 meter per second, and so that's going to be our initial velocity for our simple harmonic motion. So now that we know that, of course, what we can do is we can actually now um, apply conservation of energy. Okay, so at t equals zero, right? So that's the moment of the collision. We know that there's no potential energy in the system because our spring is at rest. So now we can uh, use conservation of energy. We know that the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, which is zero, must equal the total energy in the system. And we know that the total energy in a mass spring system is one half Ka square. Okay, and so these vectors one half cancel out. And so you find that A square, that's the amplitude, which is what we're searching for, a square is going to be mv square over k, or you find that a equals the square root of m over k times v. Okay, now square root of m over k, you can see right here, omega is the square root of k over m, so this essentially is v over omega. We know that our um, v is one meter per second, right? That's at t equals zero. Our omega we find here is 2.91 radians per second. And so you find that the amplitude here is 0 0.343 meters. Okay, and so with that, we have now determined uh, the amplitude. Now, as I mentioned, there's different ways of, of doing this, and perhaps you actually found um, a different way. So let's perhaps try try one alternative here. Um, so we're talking about simple harmonic motion. So what do we know? Well, we know that the displacement x as a function of time is going to be a times the cosine of omega t plus phi. Okay. So now, omega we have already determined, phi we don't know. Uh, and so there's no immediate information here that would help us to get to uh, t. So for t equals zero, okay, what, what do we know? Well, that's one thing that we could do actually. So for t equals zero, we know that the displacement is zero. So x must be zero. So you find that a times the cosine of phi must be zero, okay? And so from this you find that phi must be pi over two. But that's all you get out of that. There's like no immediate way to get the amplitude out. However, but that's not all that we know. We also know if this is the displacement, we know that the velocity in simple harmonic motion is the derivative of this with respect to time. And so that's minus a omega times the cosine of omega t plus phi. Okay, but now we can actually solve this because we know that the velocity at our time zero is going to be one meters per second, right? And so we can now calculate at time t, this is going to be minus a omega times the cosine of phi, which is pi over two. Okay. And so The cosine of pi over two. No, of course, what I'm saying. 
it's not the cosine, it's the sine, of course. The derivative of the cosine is the sine. Sorry, the sine. And so the sine of pi over 2, of course, is 1. So this is minus a omega. And so we know that this is 1 meters per second square. So we can actually solve for a is going to be v naught divided by omega. The minus sign is just a, a directional factor here, so we can forget about that when we solve for the magnitude. V is one meter per second square. Omega we found was 2.91 radians per second. And so here too, you find that the amplitude is 0 0.343 meters.